So it's that time again here on Retro Core where we take a look at some more junk from China. And this time it's the Time Top Mini Console. Well, what is this thing exactly? Well, basically it's an emulation device with no games stored inside it, but you do get a variety of buttons on the top. As you can see, we've got some menu buttons here and the home button at the very end. Around the front of the machine, you've got a lovely clear window and inside there you'll find an infrared receiver. On the side, we've got an SD card slot for SD cards up to 8GB in size, loaded with all your favourite ROMs of course. And around the back of the machine we've got the power button, a DC input, a USB slot for more ROMs and a TV out slot, composite only. Now this system comes with a Wii Remote style controller, but it's not motion sensitive or anything like that. In fact it's very cheap so let's take a look at it. So as you can see it's got the LEDs just like a real Wii Remote and the A and B button at the bottom and a D-pad up at the top and C and D buttons as well which are basically just accept and back page. These centre buttons here seem to have different functions and the speaker slot has no speaker at all. Got a reset button on the top of the device as well. At the very top you've got an infrared sender and one on each side of the controller also. So you can hold the controller in various different angles. There's even one at the bottom. The controller is powered by two standard AA batteries. The feel of the controller is kind of flimsy and to be honest the D-pad is terrible on it. So what's this thing meant to be capable of doing? Well let's take a look at it in action. So first let's take a look at the settings. There's a variety of languages you can choose from to cater to most countries in the world. Then you've got the TV style. When you first buy it, it comes as PAL. So if your TV is not PAL compatible, you're gonna have a hard time changing it to NTSC. System default settings, change it back to PAL. And here's the system information. As you can see, we've got the SD card and the USB icons here. No USB installed, only an SD card, so let's access that. Now you're meant to be able to do a variety of things on this machine, so first let's take a look at the photos. As you can see, they display fairly well. You can even zoom in. Ah, that brings back memories, the old Subaru Impreza. Fortunately some dick crashed into it, so that's gone. You can also take a look at some of the uh, stats about the picture. And this picture here is taken from one of my RetroCore videos. Now the machine also plays music files. Although the quality doesn't seem to be too good. Now I know it's not the MP3 because these MP3s are recorded in 320 kilobytes a second at 48 megahertz. I did try and play some WAV files on this machine, but it wasn't having any of it. And I should probably notice you can turn the volume up and down, as well as doing some repeat play. The machine also plays videos, but unfortunately only plays standard definition, won't play any high definition video at all, and it's also kind of limited in the formats which it will play. Won't do MP4, won't do most AVIs, won't do MKV, basically it just does 3G and well, MPEG, MPEG 1 that is. And again the video quality is kind of dark and the sound quality isn't too good either. As you can clearly see, these videos look great on the PC, but look terrible on this. Night, 
One good thing is though when you exit a video it does let you bookmark a page on it. So you can start back in the exact same place. As you can see there it wouldn't play the mp4 video. But we all know the only reason for buying this machine is to play the games. So let's start off by taking a look at some of the Game Boy Advance titles. And as you can see Game Boy Advance emulation is very bad. The frame rate is extremely patchy at best. Sometimes it will move smooth at 30 frames a second, but most of the time it's skipping frames like mad. One plus thing this device does have is save states, so you can save a position in the game and go back to it. Let's take a look at Darius also running on the Game Boy Advance. And yep, same issue as Crash Bandicoot, skipping frames like crazy. Sega Rally here, absolutely unplayable. Mind you, it's a little bit jerky on a real Game Boy Advance to be honest, but nowhere near as bad as this. And finally let's take a look at Ninja Cop, one of my favourite games on the Game Boy Advance. And unfortunately it's completely unplayable on this device. The frame rate is probably the worst we've seen so far and the controls seem very unresponsive. Plus you probably noticed that the energy bars at the top of the screen are glitching like mad. Taking a look at regular Game Boy games, they seem to run pretty well. Got World Heroes Jet here, speed seems to be fine, although the audio does seem a little bit off. It's kind of hissy as well. In fact, all the emulation on this machine has some sort of background hiss on it. Turtles here, again, seems to be running at a decent speed but the audio does seem to be a bit low in quality. Let's take a look at some Game Boy Color games. Uh, let's check out R-Type on the R-Type Deluxe Pack. Yeah, like regular Game Boy games, this seems to be working pretty much without any problems. Well, apart from the audio, that is. And of course a Chinese clone wouldn't be complete without being able to play Famicom or NES games. Batman here from Sunsoft seems to be working quite well. Doesn't seem to be any issues with this one. Unfortunately Capcom's G.I. Joe seems to have issues with the sound. In fact this is the only NES game that had issues with the sound. I tried a few others as well and they all had weird sound as well. But don't feel bad if you're a NES fan because even Sega Mega Drive games sound awful and they got loads of screen tearing too. Just listen to that. Should sound like this. Even the Mega Drive emulation isn't very good, and to be honest this device has a lot of issues playing certain games. I tried about 8 games on it and only 4 of them played. And obviously Virtual Racing won't play. The machine will also play Super Famicom or NES games, but again just like the Mega Drive it has big issues with the audio. <laughs> The 
the sound effects seem to be really bad on Super Back to the Future, and the audio is extremely scratchy. The game even seems to slow down more than it does on a real Super Famicom. So let's take a look at Sunset Riders. Um, for some reason, I can't find my gun. Now don't forget the Super Famicom uses four buttons, or six if you include the L and R triggers. But even when you go into the option mode and reconfigure the buttons, and then go back to the game, they don't make any difference. You still can't fire your weapon. The control changes just don't seem to work. Very odd. And again, like Super Back to the Future, this game also has pretty scratchy audio. All in all, what do I think of the Time Top Entertainment Box? Well, it was very cheap, it was only 1,900 yen or something like that. So, very cheap device, that also included shipping. But, it doesn't seem to do anything right apart from play Game Boy game, and even then the audio is a bit crappy on them. So, is it worth picking up? Well, to be honest, no! It's a load of rubbish! Maybe you could use the case for some modding project, but, um, but if that's what you want to do, you may as well go and pick up the NES Mini clone. <laughs>